Reptile. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm all here for some mammals. <laughs> a worm is definitely not a mammal. I know that. <laughs> yeah, still. Day of, of spring, uh, Felicia. So, yes, uh, springtime storms are coming as we head throughout the last day of winter. So I was just updated. Re told me, uh, Re, our wonderful producer, she said, um, if you Google it, a mealworm is a bug. It looks like a roach. And now hmm. I feel differently about all the cookie I've just so, eaten. So, <laughs> you know, I just validated my stance of, yeah, I'm just not This was a hill that. I was going to die on, too, but... Enjoy it. This is it. So... It also has roach-looking bugs in it, too. Just well, you know, sometimes you just got to find the silver lining, and the silver lining <laughs> is the chocolate. <laughs> what, what can I say? Okay, let's do the city timing for you, because as Paul just talked about, we've got that chance for some strong storms. Rochester, here's 1 o'clock, maybe not the best Saturday to head out and brunch. You can see the storms traveling along that 90 corridor. Moving through Syracuse as we move through the afternoon. Watertown, you guys are getting in on that. That 86 corridor is going to be stuck in some very heavy rain at times. Buffalo waves of rain moving through for you on and off throughout the day today, especially during the afternoon, though. And again, some of those storms could pack a punch. Some of them could reach severe limits. Let's head to Philly now, where you'll see these storms moving into places like Redding initially along that 78 corridor by the mid afternoon. Watch how this fills in south and east down into Easton as we head into 7 o'clock. Wilmington and Philly, you start to see those storms blasting through 8 and 9 o'clock. So it's going to be post sunset for you guys as these storms blast through. If you're planning out your Saturday evening, maybe you have dinner plans. You're not going to want to pick one of those places where you have to walk really far or maybe the draw is being outdoors because you're going to have those storms around. Let's head to Binghamton and Forest City Overfield where you guys have those storms around through the afternoon. Wilmette, you're going to have a wave of heavy rain. We're talking about visibility reducing windshield wipers going crazy type of rain. Scranton, you guys are getting in on that too for the second portion of your day. And again, some of those storms could pack a bit of a punch. Albany, Schenectady, you guys see this moving through this evening, so most of your day is fine. It's this evening into the nighttime hours where you're going to want to stay weather aware. I know for your Saturday, this isn't uh, the thing that you want to hear because you might have Saturday night dinner plans, but just plan accordingly, Paul, because some of these storms are definitely going to be a little feisty. Yes, and it's not just the Northeast. More about that, because whenever you have that risk for strong to severe storms, there's always a lot of focus on uh, the threat for damaging winds or hail or uh, the isolated tornado threat. But what we've seen already are flooding issues for portions of the Florida Panhandle for southern Georgia, southern Alabama as well. Apalachicola, you have been stuck in a steady stream of this moisture rolling off the Gulf. Panama City, uh, not so much for you, but I'm sure you can see those rain clouds as they cross that I-10 corridor. Look at some of this accumulation that we've seen in the past 24 hours. I don't care where you are, what um, region you're in. When you're talking about uh, 10.7, a foot, more than a foot of rain in 24 hours along that I-10 corridor, you're running into some flooding problems in that region. Now, we're not quite done with the rain yet. You can see we still have the waves of rain that are going to continue to pull through as we head through the overnight hours, moving along that 10 corridor Lake City, eventually making its way through Jacksonville and Gainesville as well. And as we head into your Sunday, you can see we do get a breakthrough Sunday afternoon, so that's the good news. Timing it out here in Columbia and Lake City, Charleston, you guys have waves of rain moving in for the second portion of your day as well. Here's 6 p.m. So if you're trying to plan out your Saturday afternoon and evening, you're going to want to take that into account in Charleston in Myrtle Beach, Columbia, you're much drier than the coastal cities as we head through the second part of your day. To tally where by the morning we've got some hit or miss storms. You get a little bit of a break through your early afternoon. Mid-afternoon, that chance for storms and rain comes back in. The temperatures staying in the lower 70s, so put a little cap on those temperatures for you thanks to some of this cloud cover and rain that we're going to see. Wilmington, quiet through the beginning part of your day. It's really later this afternoon and evening when those storms are going to move through. Some of those could put down some really heavy rain and could uh, also have some thunder and lightning with them. So plan your Saturday night in Wilmington according. Paul. All right. Thanks, Paul. We've got much more ahead on Weekend Recharge. Plugging in electric vehicles. So you want to stick around for that. All right. Let's take a look at our forecast here for Dallas. Yes, some wind coming through behind our system, which takes our temperatures from the 80s down to the 60s as we head on towards your Tuesday as we begin next week. Yeah, big changes coming with that. Hey, let's take a look at the Alcon Spring Outlook for your first day of spring. Of course, spring officially starting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, if I had to choose my spring weather for tomorrow, I'm heading to Kansas City. 77, <laughs> mostly sunny. That's my perfect weather. We were all on the edge of our seats waiting. I
too. I know. That. You're like, little, little drum roll. But hey, I like the spring skiing setting up out towards the west. Mm -hmm. Yes, the clock over the calendar might say spring, but we got powder in Big Sky, Montana, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and also some snow falling in the Wasatch of Utah. Yeah, you can see these temperatures not looking bad for much of the country as well. A place like Boston, 62 for you tomorrow mm -hmm. for spring. Well, spring, of course, as we mentioned, officially begins tomorrow, but allergy season is not waiting. Paul t Paul t <laughs> Pollen is a big culprit. Meteorologist Mike Pettis explains why. A new study found that climate change is actually making pollen worse. Hear directly from the people behind that study about uh, what this could mean for your allergies. That's tomorrow right here on Weekend Recharge. Yeah, so let's take a look at that pollen outlook. Mm. Uh, you can see where we have very high. You can probably, well, maybe you can see, I don't know, maybe your eyes are all like foggy and messy because the pollen might be really getting you as an allergy sufferer. I know I've been feeling that difference. Yeah, high tree pollen. Oh, my kids would say, you'd say, We'll just cut the trees down. You stop the pollen. <laughs> really? You can't cut the trees down. Grass pollen, we we'll cut the grass down. You won't have the pollen. Grass pollen is getting higher as we start warming up across the, the uh, parts of Florida as well as Louisiana and Texas. Yeah, okay. So you can see that's still a little bit farther south. But for today, the pollen report in Atlanta is going to be high. In Louisville, it's going to be moderate. St. Louis, same thing for you. If you're a severe allergy sufferer, though, it's probably feeling worse than moderate. Yeah, and even. Uh, Tree pollen getting higher even in parts of the, the West, moderate now in California, even in Montana in a moderate zone. Same thing here in Denver. Hey, there's so much more ahead on Weekend Recharge. Dogs and cats, I mean, this is, it's, it's the wild. Let them, leave them alone. I don't understand why people do this. I guess I gotta stop feeding my pet bear now. And then, no, and, I'm just kidding. And get off my lawn get, while, get while off you're my, feeding that bear. You, you bear, you kids, you all get off my lawn. It's half past the hour as we get recharged and rolling on. I'm Grumpy Paul. Good luck. He is. We got Grumpy Paul today. Don't you worry, though. I'll make up for it. I'm not grumpy, Felicia Combs, but this might make you a little grumpy. Severe storms, that's what we're talking about for this weekend. Those storms are going to be firing off in parts of the southeast and the northeast today. Yeah. So lots of different. Well, there are more than 100 activities happening at the Atlanta Science Festival this weekend, but there's one activity I'm pretty sure you have never tried. Well, I mean, I have now. Yeah. Get this. You and your family can sample some delicious grub made out of bugs. Real bugs. That's right. Akisi uh, Stokes joins us live this morning. She's the CEO of Wander Grubs. Akisi, uh, thanks so much for being with us. I have to tell you, I had one of the cookies. <laughs> Actually, I've had two at this point, and I so loved them. <laughs> so can you explain why eating bugs is good for the climate and why it's a sustainable option? Yeah, definitely. So, but I, I'm impressed. I'm impressed by the cookies and I can't wait to try maybe the pancake mix. I'm going to have some pancakes for you and I'm not going to tell him a key and he's going <laughs> to love them. You Thanks. might have a chance with bacon with me. Well, you know, thanks so much for talking to us this morning. Such great stuff there. And, you know, as we move forward with the, our climate change battle, things like that are going to make a big difference. Well, you know, I've had those those fake meat burgers before and I was convinced with that. So, you know, I'm not saying I'll never try this, but pancakes coming not next today. weekend. Just wait. Okay, so we're asking you: Are you willing? It's so hard <laughs> after so eating hard. bugs. Oh, I'm so full of mealworms right now. I can't focus. Funny thing is that water spout. I had a dream last night that I spotted a water spout. Like told the future with your dreams. Oh, God. Um, not Nostradamus. I'm Paul. Good luck. But you know that is part of our job. What? Telling the future. Yeah, I mean, yes. what can I say? I'm Felicia Combs. We've got severe storms. They have entered the chat as well. Did you dream about that? I did not. No. Okay, well, storms will be firing off in parts of the southeast and the northeast today. So let's take a now, Felicia, not the only place you're watching for severe. The southern line, uh, so the southern end of this line could bring some more severe weather and heavy rain to the south. Yeah, it's already brought in like quite a bit of rain. We're talking about more than a foot of rain in portions of the Florida Panhandle. So beneficial for the drought that we've been dealing with. But when you get that much rain at one time, too much of a good thing is never a good thing, right? So let's talk about it. Here's where we've seen more than a foot right just south of that I-10 corridor. Nearly a foot there in that accumulation as you look just a little bit farther west. Uh, south Georgia, southern Alabama as well have seen more than a half foot of rain in the past 24 hours. Guys, that is problematic. I don't care where you are in the world. That is going to cause some flooding issues, especially to flood, flood 
risk-prone places. Here's where we have that risk for severe storms as we move through the day today and that southern tail of that line of that frontal boundary that Paul was just talking about brushes through damaging wind gusts, but also an isolated tornado risk here across southeast Georgia, southern portions of South Carolina as well. You'll maybe look at that and say, oh, it's a Torcon of two. That's not a big deal, but all it takes is one damaging tornado for it to be a big deal. So make sure you're heeding those warnings. You're getting those alerts in a timely fashion, and you know where you need to go in your home if you are under a tornado warning. Here's where those storms are bubbling up for this afternoon. You can see it edging down the coastal plain, eventually pushing offshore, but we'll have kind of lines of storms lining up along that frontal boundary before all is said and done overnight tonight into your Sunday morning. Quick look at Columbia. You guys are going to be a bit more displaced from a lot of the storm action than, say, Myrtle Beach and Charleston. We're going to see a lot of this action focused along the coastal areas as we head through your afternoon. So, Paul, of course, it's that time of year when people are headed to these beach places to enjoy the weather, do some spring breaking, and the weather is definitely impacting that this weekend. Yeah, got to be weather aware when you're on the road. Thanks, Felicia. Well, I hate to see those stories coming out of Texas. And, of course, a story that we have been following and we've seen get worse has been the drought conditions for portions of the Southern Plains, where you're seeing the maroon color. That is the highest level of drought rating and exceptional rating for places like Midland and up around Amarillo. But even where you're seeing the reds surrounding Dallas, uh, that is extreme drought. And we know that is problematic, especially when you have the weather set up like we have to elevate this fire threat. So critical fire threat from Garden City all the way down from Midland. We're seeing a large area of real estate that's seeing that possibility for fires to start and spread pretty quickly because of the weather conditions that we have. So we have red flag warnings here for portions of New Mexico. Fire weather watches stretching all the way up through portions of uh, Nebraska down through Kansas. KC or Oklahoma, you guys are included in that. Now, when we talk about the, the fire danger criteria, you can kind of see what we've got going on here. The fuel, fuel, fuel moisture, the relative humidity, and the wind speed all playing a big role in exactly where we see that rating. So you can see why we've got that possibility for fire starting and spreading quickly in this region. Watch what happens as we move through the day. The winds quickly pick up, and that would spread those fires. Paul like a rocket and fall like a feather. Mm -hmm. And those steep prices may have you thinking that an electric car is a good option, but all the different kinds of plug-in vehicles can get a little confusing. Yeah, and hybrid this, hybrid mm -hmm. that, EV. Well, I had a chance to learn more about each option earlier this week at the North Texas Auto Show. Take a look. Okay, so if you're still not convinced about electric vehicles, what if I told you that some models could actually power your home during severe weather? So, Paul, you're giving us a look at that and much more in the coming weeks. We've got uh, a bunch of different things to talk about. Yeah, and also these cars will perhaps get you to destination safer when the weather turns ugly. So you're going to be telling us all about that, how it can help you with your home. You've got all the info that we need. And because they don't have engines, they have the compartment in the front. You know what it's called? A frunk. A frunk. You got junk <laughs> in your frunk in some of these cars. Uh, uh, coastal Georgia, South Carolina, even North Carolina as well. There are going to be a lot of people saying, I can't stand the rain. I Truly. Can't stand the rain. Yeah, they're definitely going to be, especially if you're like out there for your spring break. You're like, I'm over it. Our director saying, yeah, let's drown out good low. He can't yeah. sink. Yeah, I mean, well, listen, we got to, we got to um, make you <laughs> stick around somehow. So, yeah. okay, so here's what's going on. We've got a really big dip in the jet stream, and that is allowing warm air. It's like, what do you call it? A um, seesaw. A seesaw. You push one side down, the other side goes up. That's what's up. happening. In the jet stream right but now. We're bringing up warm, moist air at the surface here for fuel for these storms to get going. And a little dry line there, much drier air behind it. That's acting as a cold front. There's also another trailing cold front with this system, but that's at the surface aloft, different direction, different wind speeds, and that can set up kind of Two things, shear zones as well as help fuel and have these storms mm -hmm. last for a long time. Yeah, that's right. So we've got all the different ingredients coming together that give us an indication that there is a risk and the potential for severe weather. That's what we're seeing as we head through early next week. And you see all of this travel eastward along with the system, especially in that warm sector. Yeah, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 
and all times in between. Not just a daytime or daylight hour type threat here as we are watching across all the Gulf Coast states the chance for strong and severe thunderstorms. Yeah, so let's take you to Monday here where you can see portions of eastern Texas over into Louisiana. The darker shading indicative of where we have the best chance for severe weather. All modes of severe weather possible with these storms. And severe weather also includes flash flooding, heavy rain coming on through there. Already had some reports yesterday with severe weather, but still watching that heavy rain come through. Even places like Alexandria, Virginia, uh, Louisiana, seeing some heavy rain and lightning as we start the week. Mm -hmm. hey, a bolt of lightning. Hear us talking a lot about severe weather. So what exactly does that mean? So let's talk about first initially a watch versus a warning for a tornado. You know, we take it for granted that, you know, people just know this. But if you're not immersed in knowing what this means, you might not know what's the difference. Yeah, so a watch, a, th a tornado watch, severe thunderstorm watch, meaning that hey, conditions are favorable for Tornado for tornado watch doesn't mean it's happening right now, but it says, hey, here's a forecast could be out for maybe three, maybe six hours of you could see tornadoes develop in that region in that time span. Yeah, and when you get the tornado warning, that means there is indication that there could be a tornado ongoing. That warning means that you need to get into your safe spot right away. You know, we we have kind of a joking analogy, but I think it's a good way to remember it. When you are uh, have all the ingredients to make the cake, you have a cake watch. When the cake is actually being Made, it's already like in the oven baking. You have a cake warning. No, no, you have that cake on the plates and the fork. That's a cake warning because I'm going to eat that. Well, cake. that's too. That too. All, <laughs> all of the above. <laughs> Also, what we have is what we call PDS or particularly dangerous situations. That's used for watches that we know we could see a very high chance of seeing tornadoes. And these could be long lived on the ground for tens, if not more than 100 miles. Yeah, and you don't see a ton of watches like this. The National Weather Service really doesn't uh, jump at la labeling things particularly dangerous situations because they like to use that for real emphasis. So when you have that, that is when you know that you have a really dangerous situation. Okay. And also remember your safety rules or perhaps you might have to dust this off. You want to leave your mobile homes and vehicles. Do not put them under uh, an overpass. Uh, you want to It is finally here. No, not what? Not what? The what it's is... the last day of winter. Oh, it's I was finally like, here. Oh, you're really excited today, huh? <laughs> Happy Saturday, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Weekend Recharge. I'm Paul Goodloe. He is, and I'm Felicia Combs. Of course, America's weekend. It depends on the weather. That's why we're here. And we have a lot of stormy days ahead in the next few days. So let's go ahead and take a look at your snapshot forecast for your Saturday. Over a minute. But first, let's take a look at your seven-day stretch as we slide right into the first few days of spring. Of course, spring of officially beginning tomorrow morning at 1130. But first, we've got to get through our last day of winter, which is today. Let's take a look at what you can expect for your Saturday. We'll see two systems sandwiching the middle of the country. So we've got a system moving through the Great Lakes in the northeast, a little bit of the southeast as well. But in the central U.S., you're looking at sunshine and quiet conditions. Heading into your first day of spring on Sunday, you see those temperatures hitting 80 in Dallas. Enjoy that while you have it 62 in Chicago because we know changes are coming. Our next big system starts to move through as we head into Monday, our first full day of spring, and you've got snow flying in Denver. You've got big changes coming in the temperature department across portions of the country as well, going from the 80s in places like Dallas for the weekend to the 60s. Meanwhile, LA, you guys are still going to be in the 80s and sunny by Wednesday. Rain covering much of the country east of the Mississippi. We see that sliding toward the east coast as we head toward Thursday, places like Chicago, a little bit of snow.